Hey what's up guys Tanmay of for simple snippets and I'm back with another video tutorial on boolean algebra and logic gates so in this video tutorial we'll be understanding the working of a decimal to bcd encoder now in the previous couple of video tutorials we've been go going through the concept of encoders and decoders in fact in the previous two video tutorials we've just saw the basics of encoder and decoder and in the last video we saw a type of encoder which was priority encoder so if you have missed those videos you can check those videos in this playlist itself and you can see a card on the top right corner which points to the previous video which was priority encoder also if you are new on this channel make sure you subscribe to this channel because you'll get notified whenever i upload a new video tutorial based on information technology or computer science oriented subjects and topics and for that you can just turn on the notifications as well okay so with that being said let's get started with today's topic okay so as you can see on the screen i have a truth table and then you can see some inputs and you can also see some outputs i'll explain you what those are and this is the block diagram of a decimal to bcd encoder now before we start off i hope you know what bcd is bcd stands for binary coded decimal so it is a coding scheme which is basically a binary number but not exactly a binary number scheme so what we do is we represent each decimal say for example the decimal number is 0 we represent it with 4 bit binary code so this is different than the regular binary because if the decimal number has two or more digits if the binary is uh, if the decimal is something like this then you individually represent 2 and 1 with its 4 bit binary representation so this would be 0010 and this would be 0001 and this two together will comprise to bcd so this is not what regular binary would look like right regular binary would be something like 1100 so this would be in regular binary and this is the bcd version now i have an extensive video of the conversion between decimal to bcd and binary to bcd and in fact i totally have a different playlist which can consist of all the number systems and conversions like decimal to octal octal to decimal hexadecimal gray code ask and what not every every pretty much almost all the number systems that are there i have already covered and you can see a card on the top right corner which points to that playlist so if you want to know more about those number systems you can check the, check those videos as well after this video and okay so we are pretty much good to go with today's topic let's start off so what decimal to bcd encoder does is it converts a decimal number to a bcd number so basically encoder function is to convert one format of data into another format right so in this case what we are going to do is the input is going to be a decimal number and the output is going to be a bcd number so how do we go about it now for decimal numbers we have 0 to 9 right so in the construction of this encoder we have 10 different inputs starting from d0 to d9 and each of this line will represent one decimal number so d0 will be representing zero number d1 would be one d2 would be two and so on till d9 so these are the 10 different digits right in the decimal number system and the output would be corresponding to its bcd code so if this line is high that is d0 line is high then the output is going to be 4 times 0 similarly if d1 is high then the output is going to be 0001 if d2 is high the output is going to be 0010 so on and so forth you can see the representation over here right so this is what a decimal to bcd encoder is and basically what happens is when zero line that is d0 line is going to be high all the other lines are going to be low so that's how encoder works right at a time only one of the data line is going to be high that's the functionality of a basic encoder and in this case it is going to be a decimal to bcd encoder so what essentially we are doing for this special conversion is that we are assigning each line input line its corresponding decimal number so d0 is always going to be zero in decimal basically it's going to be high or low only that is the signal is going to be zero and one which is binary but it represents a decimal number and the output will be corresponding bcd code because it will give a four bit output which would be something like for zero it would be four times zero for one it would be triple zero one for d2 it would be zero zero one zero so this is how we actually convert decimal to bcd CD code using a decimal to BCD encoder. So now you must be wondering, okay, so how do we actually design it? Be because this is just the box diagram, right? There must be some circuits inside and some logic gates, right? Inside this, there has to be some logic gates which are making this happen. That is, when this goes high and all the other lines are going to be zero, you need to get an output of four times zero, right? That is, y zero would be zero, y one would be zero, y two would be zero, and y three would be zero. So that kind of functionality needs to be achieved inside this using some logic gates, right? So let's try to actually design it in real time so that we will understand. and exactly what the working is so for that we need to understand that there are four outputs right so we have y0 we have y1 we have y2 and we have y3 okay so in the previous video tutorial that was a priority encoder we found the output expressions by using k maps but since here we have 
four different calculations for four different outputs and we have 10 inputs. So the KMAP would be very tedious to solve, right? So instead of that, what we'll do is for every output, we are just going to see which of the values are high and we'll just correspondingly take the inputs. Okay. So you must be confused with this. What I mean is let's take an example of Y3. So for Y3, you can see this is the entire column, right? And we are only looking out for wherever the output is high. So the output is high at D8 and D9. So we just write that out over here D8 plus D9. Now this plus is basically an OR operation. And the reason why we are taking OR is because it is a sum of products and we are just interested in with the output is one. So we have to take sum of products. So only D8 and D9 have a positive output at Y3. So we write D8 and D9. So let's see for Y2. So Y2 is this next column. So you can see we have D4, D5, D6, D7. So I just write it down D4 plus D5 plus D6 plus D7. Okay. Let's see for Y1. You can see we, for Y1 we have these four values D2, D3 and D6, D7. So D2 plus D3 plus D6 plus D7. Okay. And for Y0 we have these four values. Not four. We have five different values, right? So we have D1 plus D3 plus D5 plus D7 and D9. Okay. So now we have the expressions for each of these outputs. Now we can go ahead with the circuit diagram. So let me just erase this blue part and I'll just organize this properly. Okay. So you can see I've organized everything. Now we have this space. Let's try to draw the circuit diagram in this space. So these are the four different outputs that we want Y0, Y1, Y2 and Y3 and the inputs are from D0 to D9. So let's first draw the inputs. We have D0. So let me just first draw the lines. That is the circuit lines. So one, two, three. Okay. So I have drawn the 10 different input lines. So these are the circuit lines. Now we are going to draw or map these equations. So for Y0, we know we have D1 or D3 or D5 or D7 or D9. So starting from D1. So this is the first one. So this is the first circuit line, which comes from D1. Then we have D3 over here. So this is D3. Then we have D5. So this is D5 over here. Then we have D7 which is this and then we have D9. So all of these are going to go through an OR gate to perform OR operation. So let me just draw one OR gate over here. It's a big OR gate you can see and it is taking all these inputs. Let me just go a little bit more over there. So the output from this OR, so this is first OR gate OR number one output is Y0 is equal to this exact output that we are getting. So D1 plus D3 plus D5 plus D7 plus D9. So the first output is done. Let's see the second output that is Y1. So Y1 is D2, D3, D6, D7. So let's start from this location D2. But the first one D2 then we have D3 which is just next to it. We have D6 and D7. So this is D6 and D7 which is just besides it. So again these are going to go to one more OR gate. The output is Y1 is equal to D2 plus D3 plus D6 plus D7. So this is OR number 2. Then we have for Y2 we have D4, D5, D6, D7. So now you get the point, right? Let me just draw both the remaining OR gates and you'll understand it exactly because that's the same repeat procedure. Okay, so as you can see on the screen, this is the circuit diagram for a decimal to BCD encoder. Now it looks a little bit difficult, but once you get these outputs, you can easily calculate and easily draw the circuit diagram because it is just an OR operation between all the outputs. And this there are you can see there are a lot of lines, but it's not very difficult because we're just drawing out lines and performing a basic OR operation to draw the circuit. So yeah, that's it for this video guys. I hope you understood the concept of decimal to BCD encoder, what it does and how do we draw the circuit diagram and how do we derive the output functions. So if you like this video and found this helpful, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and spread the knowledge as well. And also if you haven't yet subscribed, make sure to subscribe to this channel and I'll talk to you guys in the next video tutorial. Peace.